Hello everyone. Today in this video, we're going to be going over the implementation of uh, list box, list view, and data grid view. These three controls uh, all can be used to display different types of data, all in very similar types of ways. Uh, so to do that, we've set up here a very simple um, sub here that is all that it does is utilizes the enter data button from our menu strip on the main form. It prompts the user to input how many values they want to enter into our uh, array. And we have a for loop here that iterates the amount of times for the amount of uh, data points the user wishes to enter. Uh, given that, we've constructed this other sub named display data. This is going to have all of our code that actually moves the data from the array into the controls that we're going to create. Uh, keep in mind that here we're mainly going to be looking at just the implementation of the controls themselves and we'll have some other videos about the actual uh, implementation of the code here. So if we go back to our de uh, design view we're going to go ahead and put these controls into the form. So we're going to start with the list box. Uh, this is going to be the most simple one to make. I'm just going to drag it out here and position it. Uh, we're then going to place a list view. Again, it looks very similar to a list box. Uh, an important thing here to remember is never confuse list box or even list view with a text box. They act in very different ways, uh, and we'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and put in the data grid view, uh, which is going to be the next component. Now, an important thing to remember is data grid is considered a data uh, control. It is not under the normal common controls drop down, so you'll need to go down to here to grab the data grid view. Uh, for the purposes of this, we do not need to set a data source. That would be if we were working with a database or another uh, source like that. It, for, just for right now, we're just going to drag these out, and I'm not going to rename them for this exercise. We're going to leave them all with their basic names. Uh, so after we've actually put the controls into the interface, the first thing we need to do um, list box we can leave alone it does not uh, store anything it does not have any columns or any properties that we need to edit however uh, the list view will need to go to the properties of that and what we're gonna see is um, there's gonna be an option here that shows us what we are actually able to see uh, using the list view and, and what I mean by that is I'll, I'll demonstrate quickly if we right click on the list view uh, we're going to need to add columns to this so if we click the edit columns button we're going to add a column and we can actually add another one so we have two columns right now now they, they do not have the names that we want so we're going to go ahead and edit um, the second one and we're going to change its name that we actually see that's going to be the text uh, keep in mind we are not adding the design name uh, we're just going to edit the text of the header and we're going to name this um, description we can leave all the settings the same we can edit the width here um, I'm gonna leave it at 60 we'll, we'll see if that actually fits later uh, our second column is going to be we're gonna name that value uh, it, whenever we display this we're going to be displaying a description on the left column and the actual value of what the user entered on the right so after we have those we can go ahead and click OK um, and the thing you're gonna see is nothing shows up uh, we have absolutely no column showing and that is why we need to go to properties we're gonna have to edit this setting so that we can actually see that um, whenever we look at all of our properties there's lots of them that we're going to be looking at and the main thing we want to focus on here is the view specifically right now you see it's set at large icon that is not going to allow us to see the columns we're going to need to click the drop down and change this to details uh, after we've done that you can see now we actually can see these columns showing up in the list view uh, you'll see they're a little bit small though. We really aren't utilizing the right amount of space. This is where, again, completely optional. Uh, we could go back and edit the columns. Uh, we could edit our description column and maybe move its width up to 100, so to say. And you'll see it gets a little bit bigger and we're not scrunching that description and cutting it off. 
again, we can keep playing around with this and edit it up to an area that would make most sense. So we've, we've gotten list view set up. Uh, we have our two columns and now it, it is important to note you can add these uh, programmically you do not have to add the columns at runtime for the purposes of this video we are going to focus on adding them at design time uh, the only reason is it's a little bit simpler and it's redundant if you do it in program so now that we have list view set up we're going to set up our data grid uh, this one's a little bit simpler all we're going to do is uh, add some columns so the first column, we do not need to name it, but we will name the header text. Again, this is what the user will see as description. And we will add another column, value. We'll cancel now that we're done uh, adding columns. You'll see data grid's much simpler. Uh, we don't really have to change any of the view properties. It automatically shows us the column headings. Uh, very straightforward. So now that we have these two controls set up, uh, we're actually ready to start adding data to them. So now that we come back here to our code, we're going to be working under our sub display data. Uh, remember that inside of the enter data uh, button, we have called this function. So it will run the code that is inside of this display data sub uh, whenever we click the button. So inside of here, we're actually going to add the data into these controls. Um, so the very first thing that we're going to work with is actually adding to the list box. Um, the first thing that we want to add is we want to put in there how many uh, values the user has entered. And so how we're going to do that is, and like I said, it, it's important to remember that they do not work like a text box does. Uh, our code to do this is going to be, uh, we're going to reference the list box, so in this case list box one dot items dot add. All the list box and list view properties, um, they reference data as items. So there's different items, and inside of that you can have sub items. And it's not too important to know that yet. We'll get to that in list view, but just understand that unlike a text box that just sees everything as uh, strings of text that are entered, the list box and list view view every piece of data as a item, uh, and that is how they actually reference the data. So now that we've uh, set up this basic code that is what we will use to add the data in, uh, what we put inside of the parentheses is the data we want to add. So in this case, uh, the main thing we want to print is number of items. Uh, I guess we could just call this number of values really, just to be specific. So we're gonna print that string of text. That's the first thing we want to show up in the list box. We're going to concatenate a space into this, just because if we um, if we just if we didn't add this space here and went ahead and just wrote in uh, our number of values, it it would be scrunched up right against number of values, and the formatting would look fairly bad. So we're just adding in that space there to clean it up a little bit. And so then uh, we're just going to add in onto the other side. Now it's important to know that we can use n in this instance because we've made it a global variable. However, if this sub was not inside of the same form, we would need to use the value that we've uh, called in the function or the sub, which is number of values. So just to keep it clear, I'm going to use that instead, just so you understand, uh, we really should be using uh, this reference. So very simple, whenever we run the code, it's going to add uh, number of values and the number of value uh, to the first line of the list box and we can actually test that real quick just to show you Okay, so upon running our code we can enter in some test data here And we see that the list box does indeed give us the right number of uh, values here that it has counted uh, So upon verifying that we know that this list box code is indeed valid. Uh, as I said, this is a pretty simple uh, implementation of this control. List box is very simple. Uh, now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and move on to the list view and data grid view. Uh, something important here uh, to note before we go any further at all is that here, whenever I declared this input of my function, I declared number of values as a double. We're gonna wanna change that to as integer. 
uh, the reason why is we defined n as an integer at the beginning of the program and if we make it a double we could end up with a mismatch later on in the program uh, I try to leave some of these things in there just so that uh, if you're a little bit advanced ahead you may catch them uh, it helps you learn the content just a little bit better um, so now that we fixed that small error and we've demonstrated our program does indeed work uh, what we're going to want to do now is construct a for loop uh, to paste the rest of the data uh, that we actually input into the controls. Um, the reason we're using a for loop here is because we have a defined length. We know exactly how much data we're going to be entering. So knowing that, we'll go ahead and construct this for loop. Uh, we're going to start at zero and go to number of values minus one. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do inside the loop is, of course, paste the data to the list box. Being that we've already covered this, uh, we'll just run right through this. Uh, what I will do is I'm going to say, uh, you know, let's put some string in here that says data value. Uh, I'm going to add a space just for formatting. And then I'm going to add the value of i plus 1 to say data value. In this case, for the first run, it would be 1. The reason I'm doing i plus 1 here is if I just do i, it's going to start at 0, which is the same position of the loop. Now we need it to start at zero for the purposes of the array, but for the user, we don't want to say that it's data value zero, we'd want to say data value of one. So after we do that, I'm then going to add in another space and then add in a uh, colon here just to kind of give it a good uh, formatting. I'll add another space, and then on the other side, we're actually going to add the value. And the value in this case is going to be x, uh, the array at position i. Uh, so this was pretty simple. Like I said, the exact same way we did before. Uh, we're just putting in this for loop now, so that, that way we're going to paste in all of our data points. Now we're going to do list view. List view is a little bit tricky. Um, I will caution you, there are many different ways of doing this. I'm going to be doing it the way that I believe is the simplest and uh, least confusing for beginners at least. And so the way that this works is we're going to type up uh, list view one dot items dot add so very similar to list box for this very first part now mind you this first line we're writing is going to paste to the first column uh, of the list view so we're going to say uh, very similar code to what we've written above uh, we're going to say data value uh, we're going to add some space in here again i plus one now note that on this one we are only doing the um, the data value into the first column. We aren't going to write the whole string because we have two distinct columns we're writing to. Uh, so the second line of code that for the list we were going to write is actually how we're going to get the data into the next column. And the way this works, uh, I'll just demonstrate quickly. We're going to write list view one dot items of i dot sub items dot add. So the way that this works is whenever we add the first item using items dot add it is now item uh, zero. And so if we do items of zero dot sub items, it's going to paste uh, what we put inside of these parentheses here uh, into the second column of that first row. Now you'll note that we were using items i uh, to define which item we're adding. So every time we add a new row, you know, in a way we're going up a different item. So zero, one, two, three, etc. Uh, it's important to remember that when if we did this uh, later on, so like let's say we wanted to add more data after we just display the user's input, we would need to create a variable to remember uh, how many items we've had and then work off of that. Uh, what I mean is we wouldn't be able to go down to our next code and say items of zero. That wouldn't work. If let's say we have four items here and so we have zero to three. Uh, we would need to remember that our highest value is 3 and that whenever we start our items in the next uh, sub or procedure, we need to start at 4. So knowing that, uh, that's really not too important right here, so we'll just go ahead and continue constructing uh, this implementation. So we've added our first column, the data value, and so using the sub items uh, property, we're now going to add the actual value. And so all we're going to reference here is just x of i. Our, our array at position i. So again, uh, we've implemented the list box. We've implemented the list view. 
Our very last thing is to implement the data grid. Data grid is by far uh, much simpler than data, uh, list view. Uh, and the way that it works is we're just going to reference the data grid by data mm, mm, grid view, excuse me, one dot rows dot add. Uh, data grids work by we're just going to add rows uh, every time. We don't need to remember how many rows, just by doing rows dot add, it will add the next row into the uh, data grid. And the way that we differentiate columns is by putting a comma. So what I mean by that is if we write uh, data value, and again, I'm going to format it in a sign of similar way of what we've done before. Uh, so if I type this, that is going to be for the very first column. Now, whenever I put a comma here and begin writing for the next side, this is going to be for the second uh, column. So if I put x of i here, it now knows that this portion of the code, well, this portion right here is going to go into the first column and this will go into the second column. So very simple. Uh, like I said, data grid view is pretty straightforward. We're just doing rows.add and every time we put a comma, it's going to add it to a new uh, column. Uh, list box again works very much like a text box it just we don't need to use any vbcrlf command here because the great thing about a list box is every time we add an item it automatically enters us down to the next line we don't need to do any other commands to drop ourselves into the next line uh, like we would in a text box uh, list view is going to behave similarly it just says we have to have this little interesting code uh, in order to paste to the first and second columns so we'll just do a little test real quick um, and try this out and make sure that everything looks good. We'll just enter in some values again. And uh, we can see it looks like everything is pasting uh, correctly into our list box, our list view, and our data grid view. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, th it, this is a pretty simple control to work with after you understand. Uh, the most trouble I had was with the list view personally. Um, like I said, this, there are so many different ways of implementing list view. Uh, I encourage you to do a little bit of research on your own. Uh, this may be a topic that we revisit later, but as of right now, this is going to be by far the simplest way to add items into your list view. All right, well, thank you for watching.